something that's happened. Steve. Morning. And um, what's going on? Not something I can talk to you about, sorry. Well, surely I'm entitled. We're just making more inquiries at the minute. That's all I can say. Excuse me. Come on, babe. I'm quite wasting time. When have they got him? They couldn't care less about me. <sighs> you know what really gets me? He's one. Chez, he's dead. I wanted him to go through what Fizz has. Months in jail, waiting to go on trial, having to face up to it in court, and then the rest of his life inside. Well, at least he did the right thing by you in the end by confessing everything. It's bound to get Fizz off, innit? I'll get it. Yeah, well, he shouldn't have found her guilty in the first place, so... Chez, it's the police. Can we come in? Yeah, I suppose. Sorry to bother you. Have you come to apologise? Tell me that my sister's coming home. We're here in relation to the statement made by your late brother-in-law. The items he said he'd hidden. Well, don't you need a search warrant? Yes, if it shows John was telling the truth, it's going to help Fizz. What is it you're looking for? A hammer. And Charlotte Hoyle's handbag. Stapes said he'd hidden them in the outside toilet. I met him when I was 13. He was dead old. 19. A DJ. All the girls fancied him. But it was me he liked. Don't know why. You'd known him all that time. I got taken into care again. So I moved schools. John went back to uni. Sounds daft, but I always knew that I'd find him again. And I did. Four years ago. But you wish you hadn't. I probably married my boyfriend at the time. Kirk. And the next Kirk that came along. John was just some dream from another life. He was a murderer, love. Bashed a woman over the head with a hammer. Yeah, and he was my husband. He was Hope's daddy. They will show the court his confession, won't they? It's too late. Sentencing's today. Jury's been discharged. No, but it explains everything, and then they're gonna have to let me go. You're not supposed to be up. I was bringing you this in bed. You want to go back up? Nice no, dead sweet, but I'm here now. You're not having some? I've got to go to work, babe. Mm, I'll see you later. Morning. Morning. You ain't right, toast in bed. Crumbs drive you mad. He's only trying to do something nice. Oh, he's so full of himself. He doesn't have a clue what's going on, does he? Uh, he might come back. <sighs> I hate this. You know, Lloyd takes you in despite how he feels about you and we repay him by sleeping together under his roof. I felt right, you said. <sighs> Lloyd doesn't deserve it, though. He doesn't deserve you pretending you love him either. I don't know how I feel. If you weren't ill... What, so, so you slept with me because you felt sorry for me? No, of course not. So it's because you love me? <sighs> I don't know. It's not as simple as that, is it? It is for me. Yeah, you're gonna have to make a choice, Cheryl. Sooner or later. Sure he's all right? Scared of him. Well, too many raids where there's dogs. Go saw one second, teeth in your leg the next. He'd have you if I wanted him to. Chess, that's horrible. Thinking that's been in there all this time. See? He was telling the truth. Looks like it. So the belief is now? i have to go to forensic examination, but let's put it this way. I won't do a case anyhow. Morning. Oh. Moving day, is it? Oh, bits and boxes. Oh, van full. And that's after a major declutter. Uh, very posh, eh? Removals in a suit. Ah, no. Uh, Julie's flying solo this morning. Halloween assembly. The perils of trick-or-treating. Ah, it's just a bit of fun, though, isn't it? Oh. I have nothing against fun until it becomes E-number hell. Well, I tried to give them some fruit once. Oh, the things they called me. 
But I never knew five-year-olds knew that sort of language. And tomorrow, when they're coming down off the sugar-induced high... Mm. Oh. Ah, well. At least you'll have a cosy little love nest to come home to. Bijou. Sounds much nicer than little. Yeah. Well, I'd best get this back to Carla, eh? Her bacon butter. Don't want it to go cold. Uh, I'll see you in the afternoon. Try. Oh. Hey, Chaz. All right. I uh, saw the police car at yours. What's happened? Stapes dead. No. No, I love. I could have been in that car with him. <sighs> Come here. You know, no matter what he did, it was still a terrible way to die. On the run, scared, guilty, full of remorse. He murdered people. He was a liar, a conman. Don't waste your sympathy on him. He, he took a lot of people in. Very plausible. Well, let's just hope now he's finally told the truth. The police believe him. <gasps> oh, he's so pretty. Do you reckon? No, that one's nicer. Um, have you seen how much it is? Yeah, well, don't you think I'm worth it, eh? Well, we can't afford to at all. <laughs> yeah, well, you said we needed matching ones. Oh, I see. So you get it expensive from them and I end up with something made out of brass. Yeah, well, it's still lovely on your look. You've got beautiful hands. So cheap. What are you two up to now? So if makes a coffee, will you? I'm going to be late for work. OK. <laughs> Rosie? You okay? He's dead. Who? State. I've just seen Chaz. Oh, Rosie. Oh, come on. Right, so here we go. One bacon butty. Ketchup, no butter. Where do you want it? Yes, yes, thank you. Lost summer. We've done bar file, old contracts. And you're looking for old contracts because... Because he is coming here to see me today and the guy remembers everything. I mean, he'll be quoting up prices, lead times, and he expects me to be as on the ball as he is. I thought you'd like to pay everything by ear. I had the file. I brought it in with me and now I can't find it. OK, I tell you what, why don't you just sit down there and then we'll have our bacon butters before they go cold and then we'll have another look. I've just got this image of standing in front of Phil Dunbar with a stupid smile on my face. Not having a clue what to say. Oh, no, you won't. You'll knock him dead. I've seen you do it hundreds of times. Sean, this is really important. His signature on that contract means we've got more work, we can have new machines, it's Underworld back on its feet. Right, well, if there's anything you need me to do, you just ask. <sighs> Not that desperate. Come on, think. He kept saying all this happened because of me. It's my fault. I'll get that. You can't think like that, Rosie. He was a psycho. And you keep thinking, what if I'd have been in that car with him? Oh, yeah. I came to see if you fancied lunch later. Well, something happened. John Stapes dead. Right. Well, isn't that good news? I mean, the papers love a field day. So, for I have to leave with you for a bit. Yeah, sure, Jason. That's fine. Where are you going? Well, Owen will be waiting for the gear on site. I will be back soon. Mwah. Mum, you better go to work as well. Should be all right. We'll look after her. Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. Right. I'll call around at lunchtime. Come on. Bye. See ya. Listen, why don't we let bygones be bygones and start working together again? So you hated me. <laughs> Good air. Uh, after everything you've been through. Well, uh, have a think about it anyway. Catch you later. Doing exactly what John said. You've got to believe you now. How many times have we thought that before, though, eh? But this time, it's not just your word. You've got evidence. Some of these numpties can understand. Did they say anything about court today? All your barrister's got to do is say, Stapes confessed, told the police you had nothing to do with it, and you've got evidence to prove it. They'll have to let you go. No, I've made your bed up for tonight. You're coming home. You'll see. <laughs> There's one good thing to come out of all this. What is a good thing? Yeah, he can't hurt you anymore. Yeah. Every time I close my eyes, he's got me back in that flat. Yeah, well, forget about him now. Get on with your life, start doing stuff you enjoy doing. Put it all to the back of your mind. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Oh, no, dirty hands. Thanks. Listen, if you need anything, you know where I am. Thanks, Dad. Hey! 
How are you doing? Yeah, I'll be okay. Excellent. Had uh, any thoughts about us working together again? Not really. You know, it might do you good. We're getting out there again. Can I have a think about it? Okay. It's for your own good, Rosie. I know how sensitive you can be. You'd only dwell on what you've been through, and, well, as it happens, I've uh, been talking to a mate of mine at the Gazette. They'd like to a story on you. My kidnap ordeal with a serial killer. No way. Look, it's human interest, big time. They'll do a proper spread and a photo shoot. Jeff, it was horrible. I just want to move on and forget about it. It might be good for you to tell your story. Then people will appreciate how you're bouncing back. No, I'm not letting really this not, 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 not letting this psycho destroy your dreams. I don't think so. Look, I'll make a few calls. People will be happy to help you put the trauma behind you. But talking to someone at the Gazette, you will help with that. What do you think? Rosie, trust me. Now then, bud. How you doing? Yeah, OK. Uh, I'm after a favour, mate. Yeah, well, there's not much work on, pal. No, 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 you're, you're, you're flat. You're still empty. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I just uh, wondered if I could move in there for a bit. It's a nightmare, then, with Sharon and Lloyd. Yeah, I'm sure, but I can't imagine what it's like being there day in, day out, watching them play happy families. Yeah, but it's tough. You know, it's hard for Sharon and all being piggy in the middle between me and him. Yeah, but pal, there's hardly any furniture. You know, I've only got, like, a bed and a couple no, of chairs. That's all I need. Now, come on, I'm begging you. I don't know, pal. I've got to pay some rent, you know, I can't afford much. Well, I'm going to have to show people around if they're interested. It's not a problem. And you move out and find a buyer? That oh, works for me. Mm, I'll get that. <sighs> 43 boxes and bags. And you turn up just in time for the last thing. <clears throat> I'd have been here sooner, only I had to deal with a tantrum in year three. Couldn't the teacher deal with it? It was her having a tantrum. Tough turn, this. And when the run to Christmas starts, hoo hoo! Hiya. Are you moving in? Yeah. Didn't you used to live here for a bit with Chess? <laughs> yeah, it feels like a lifetime ago. You look beautiful, don't you? The very definition of blooming. <laughs> Thank you. I don't feel like it. Enjoy the flat. Oh, thanks. She don't know how lucky she is. Forget I said that, Brian. Take no notice. You've got mother written all over you. You think so? You're not averse to children? I'm certainly not averse to making them. Mr Packham! <laughs> Copy and work soon. Then why are we wasting our time standing out here? <clears throat> oh, the van. Uh, lock the van. Uh, you never know. Left-hand pocket. Uh, uh. Here you go. Thanks, love. Hey, I'll tell you what. We should take holidays more often, shouldn't we? Well, I won't argue with that. It's really nice being away from home for a bit. Mm. Away from everything. Shame we had to come back. Hey, and these takings have been pretty good. Whoa. That is for tomorrow. Today we are still on our holidays. Okay, so uh what do you fancy doing? Uh something to eat. Yeah, sure, we can nip across to Roy's. <gasps> Roy's? We're still on our holidays, remember? All right, then uh what about the bistro? Yeah, food's got to be better there. Hey, I'll have you know that man makes the best bacon butty this side of Bolton. You sure you're alright going bistro? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right if you are. Yeah. Well, in that case... Oh. <laughs> I told you, the bed's made up. She'll be home tonight. I would caution the wheels of justice turn exceedingly slowly. I have a nice bottle of wine and a little celebration tonight because that man is no longer around to terrorise my daughter. I don't think John's death should be the cause of celebration, even though he won't be mourned by many people. What about his partner in crime? There's nobody to contradict his story now. I'm innocent. It was all John. I think you'll find that's largely the case. Oh, they were in it together from the start. Shut your face, Sally. You haven't got a clue. Don't get involved, Sally. I haven't got a clue. She lied to you as much as he did, and you've swallowed every word. Whatever's happened, Chesney is not to blame, and all this... Overreacting isn't helping anyone. Well, come and spend five minutes with my daughter and see the state she's in, and then tell me I'm overreacting. Leave it, love. Come on. Well, it won't be you that's celebrating tonight. It'll be us and Fizz. <sighs> Orange, ice and a slice. You know what's the best thing you ever did? Getting out of women's underwear. <laughs> 
Thank goodness no one's listening. Mm, really? This is working. You're good at it. Thanks. Mm. Now you're meant to tell me I'm good at what I do. Like you need to, Right now, actually, I do. You are very good. <laughs> but if you need a hand with anything. Keys to Lloyd's house. Can't stay there. What do you mean? I'm moving into Jason's flat. Chris, you can't. Look, I need the space. You clearly need the space. Look, you moved in because you were ill. Because you needed help. You can't cope on your own. I can't cope with being in his house. I'm, I'm doing this for your sake as much as mine. Lloyd's bound to notice the way I look at you. The way I feel. Well, can we at least talk about it first? No, I've already moved my things, but thanks for everything. Oh, it was brilliant, thanks. Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, we did. Especially after the year we've just had. But we decided to put it all behind us. Fresh start. So we thought we'd come for a meal. If that's all right with you. Yeah, no problem. Right, yeah, in that case, we'll have a white wine and a lime and soda, please. Is it okay if I finish? Yeah, look, uh, if you need a hand with anything. So, how was Cornwall? Yeah, lovely. Even at this time of the year. Yeah, especially this time of year. It's nice and quiet. Yeah, and all that fresh air did for our side. It was in bed by 8 o'clock most nights, which meant that we could have a few cosy nights of our own, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Well, that's really nice for you. Just that I don't mean to be rude, but I have got to dash off me to clients, so sorry. I've paid them. Yeah. Hi. What are you doing here? School rang. You've got an ear infection. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah, they couldn't get you, so they called me. Yeah, I was at work, had my phone switched off, sorry. I can still got your got reading cart there. Uh, we'll have to see. If you're not well enough for school. I'll be all right, I promise. Am I imagining things, or has all Chris's stuff gone? Uh, no, you're not. Well, I thought the place seemed less cluttered, so... He's moved out. Dad has? Yeah, only across the street, just to Jason's flat. Did you make him? No, of course not. Russ, we took him in because he's ill. We're trying to look after him. Can I go and see him? Maybe later. Why don't you go and have a lie down, try and feel better for trick-or-treating? So, what's this about? I don't know. Nothing to do with his illness, making him irrational. I thought you'd be glad. I can't deny that, you know. I get my house back. I get you to myself. Suits me fine. Miss Turban? <clears throat> My lord. Fiona Stape is not a murderer. The prosecution have never sought to claim she had any physical involvement in the death of Colin Fishwick. She is, at worst, a woman who unwittingly at first and later with great reluctance became entangled in a web of lies woven by her manipulative husband. Her great crime was to have loved this man, to have been in his thrall. She is also a loving, caring mother with a baby born prematurely, a baby who will inevitably be left without parents should Fiona Stape be sent to prison. Miss Taban, your client's been found guilty of murder. This brings with it a mandatory sentence. I am, of course, aware of that, my lord, which brings me on to developments since the guilty verdict. Last night, John Stape made a full and frank confession to the police, before, sadly, dying of injuries sustained in a road accident. Yeah, absolutely. OK, that's a shame. All right, I'll let her know. Bye. Oh, can I not even have a loop right now? Who was that? Um, that was Mr Dunbar. He's, um, he's not coming. What? He said that 
there was no point because Frank Foster has offered him a much better deal. So he's on his way there now. You are joking. Right. Thank you, Sean. I feel it's Carla Connor. Yeah, <laughs> I just got your message. Listen, on the way round to Frank's, would you like to call in here first? No, of course it won't be a waste of your time. We're both too busy for that, aren't we? <laughs> Listen, I don't care what deal he's offered you. I'm going to top it. Yeah, I'll see you soon then. My lord, the police have already collected evidence related to the Charlotte Hoyle murder, which proves the veracity of John Stapes' confession. This is neither the time nor the place to consider any new or untested evidence, My no lord. matter how important you may want to believe it is. Of course it's important, didn't you hear what she the said? The defendant will remain silent. Fiona Stape. You have been found guilty of the murder of Colin Michael Fishwick. This was a particularly heinous crime. This was no act of passion, no heat of the moment aberration. I have no option but to sentence you to life imprisonment. And the minimum you must serve is 15 years. Well, Coronation Street continues in half an hour. <laughs>